How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Monitor Comics, the channel where we create comics. If this is your first time checking out my channel, then I want to point you towards some of my other comic making tutorials. So far we've covered a ton of cool topics like creating concept art, choosing panels, and even selecting specific comic effects. If any of those seem interesting to you, I'll link them in the YouTube cards in the top right corner throughout the video. If you aren't new around here, then welcome back. In today's video, I want to take you through a step-by-step -step process I use when creating comic pages. This page I'm working on specifically is for a one-page comic contest I entered on Instagram. This is my first time ever working with the story and these characters, so I'm starting with a fresh slate. Since I want this video to focus specifically on the actual page process, I'm going to skip all of the pre-production. If this were for a series or anything like that, then I'd recommend a few extra steps, but since this is a one and done deal, these steps are going to be more straightforward. So we have our character design and we got a page idea in our head. Step 1. Prepare your script. I can't stress to you enough how important scripting is in the comic book making process. By scripting out each of your pages, you'll be able to keep track of all of your dialogue before you even lift your pencil. I make sure to script out every individual panel as well, just so I can get a rough layout idea in my head. On the screen, you should see the actual script I used during the pre-production phase of this page. I try to follow a similar format to theater script writing, where you describe whether the scene is an exterior or interior shot. You don't have to be super formal. I try and get my thoughts onto the page pretty quick, so I shorthand my script with just enough information to give myself or my editor enough to work with. I'm sure there are some of you that might think scripting is a trivial step and you'd rather skip straight to the storyboards. I feel you, I did that a lot when I was first starting out. We're artists, we'd rather spend our hours actually drawing rather than writing and thinking too hard. While skipping straight to the storyboards might work for some, in my own experience I've learned that this can lead to a lot of wasted time. Too many times I've dropped projects because of writing inconsistencies and poor planning. To avoid this I always tell young artists to script out at least a few chapters before you even begin drawing, just so you don't run into any surprises during the actual process. This is a good transition to step 2. Translating text into visuals. Taking a look at the first panel description, we can see I left it pretty open ended. I just knew I wanted the two focal characters to be engaged in some sort of clash. Your first panel should usually be an exposition shot, setting up the scene for the rest of the panels. I have a whole video on paneling, so be sure to check that out for more in-depth tips. In the end, I decided to scrap the idea of these two characters actually fighting and replaced it with a post-fight scene. This allowed me to display most of the characters' full bodies as well as the actual city. For my second panel, you'll see that I didn't really give a description for how I wanted the scene to look at all. I'm not really too sure why I did that in the moment. Maybe my brain shorthands the process if I already know I want a square panel to be a close-up. In panel 4 and 5, you'll notice that I go back to describing the scene a little bit more. By writing loose rules for myself, I'm able to go crazy in the actual art, all while staying within the boundaries I set for my story. These characters could have been anything. I could have made them angels or demons, I could have made them martial artists or aliens. I do this in the very early stages so I don't commit myself to anything. I ended up giving my heroes powers based on the periodic elements to be hashtag quirky. Translating your words into visuals could take any shape you want them to. Play around with several different camera angles and focal points. During this stage, you're building a puzzle, so just find the pieces that fit best. A random rule of thumb I try to remind myself while working is to diversify my panels. What I mean by this is if I draw one face in the profile, I shouldn't draw another face in profile unless it's necessary for the story. I know it's fun to draw characters faces and all, but have some fun drawing extra backgrounds and props. My third step for creating a comic page is applying my inks. Quick disclaimer, I'm by no means a great inker. I've always referenced other artists to try and figure out what style I like best. For this page I decided to go for a more western feel with deep fill blacks and cross hatching. Something I've learned over the years is less is more. Try to avoid putting too many details while inking or else you'll begin to crowd your drawing. It's easy to get absorbed in your drawing and you forget that somebody actually has to read it. For this reason I try to put little details on the characters faces so I can keep them clean and look at. I tend to add a lot more details on the clothing and the background objects. Some great inkers I recommend you check out include Jim Chung, Sabine Rich, and J. Scott Campbell. These dudes are amazing at keeping their characters clean looking while putting a huge amount of detail into the pieces. Around this time I began adding in effects. For this page I stuck to a simple vortex effect for panel 3 and a beta flash effect for panel 4. If you want to know why I thought these effects would work the best, be sure to check out my video going over comic slash manga effects. I'll link it down in the description below. Don't be afraid to revise as you progress. I think I ended up changing all the dialogue on the final version so it reads better. It's never too late to fix mistakes. Step 4 in my comic making process is adding color. This step is completely optional but can really make your work pop. While ink work has its own appeal, it's easy to lose distinguishing features. For this reason, adding color can really help separate the different elements in your picture. I'll make an in-depth coloring tutorial at some point, but here are a few tips and tricks I've learned over the years. Flat first. Assign each of your drawings a color so you can easily adjust the hue, saturation, and luminosity. Stay organized. Make sure you name your different color layers and make use of layer folders. This will save you a headache later. Next, use clipping masks. This will make sure your shadow and highlight colors stay within your line art. Use at least three layers for shadows and two for highlights. This ensures your colors will have a good value range and some high contrast areas. 
For highlights, I tend to use Glow Dodge layers with an airbrush tool. This just gives the drawing a little extra oomph. I use a dark desaturated blue on a hard light layer for overarching shadows. This isn't a must, but I like to keep my shadow temperature cool and my highlight layers warm. Inking and coloring are skills that improve the more you do it. So if you aren't happy where your skills are right now, don't sweat it and just keep creating. My final step for creating a comic page is preparing for display. I'm sure you've heard of the term DPI, or digital pixel per inch. For some reason, everybody says the magic number is 300 DPI. Yeah, okay, do that if you want your zoom in quality to be as pixelated as Minecraft. Aww. I tend to set my page resolution at 600 DPI, even if I'm working on a standard letter size paper. If you're cropping for Instagram, instead of working on the 1000 by 1000 pixel resolution they recommend, work on a 5000 by 5000 pixel canvas instead. Trust me, you'll thank me later. While exporting, I tend to export my drawings as JPEG files. I do this because JPEGs are image files with the best resolution preservation and the smallest file size. I'd only recommend saving your file as a PNG if you want to preserve your layer information, aka if you're sending the file off to somebody else or creating a transparent image. If they're exporting, you're pretty much good to go. I hope you got some value out of this video. If you did, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Drop a comment down below on your comic book making process. I'd love to hear how you all work. Be sure to check out my work on social media. I'll link all of that down in the description below. Keep creating guys. I'll see you all in the next one.